Hi guys, uh, welcome back. My name's uh, Doug, uh, and this is uh, part four on my uh, series of tutorials on uh, basic processing of astro images in Photoshop. Uh, and in this tutorial, I'm going to talk about uh, levels, uh, what levels means, what they are, and um, and then we're going to make some adjustments to this image uh, using levels uh, using adjustment layers, which was the subject of my previous tutorial. Okay. Now this tutorial and the ones that follow. Um, are the first real sort of processing steps, if you like, that we're going to uh, um, do to this image. Uh, we're going to attempt to bring out the Galaxy M51 in this case uh, and make it look nice. Um, now it's important for you to understand that what I'm going to show you is the way I do it. Um, you could ask a hundred different people um, that uh, um, engage in this insane activity uh, and how they do their processing and you'll get a hundred different answers. Um, there is no right way and wrong way. Um, at the end of the day, bear in mind what you're trying to achieve. Um, you're trying to create an image that looks nice to you, that you're happy with. Uh, and once you've reached that stage, then you've achieved what you set out to achieve. So don't get too hung up about, about this stuff. It's certainly not going to change your life. Um, it won't make you more attractive to the opposite sex. Um, probably quite the opposite, in fact. Um, so you know, as long as you you end up with an image that you're happy with, then then that's the main thing. Um, I'm not uh, uh, an authority on this. Far from it. I'm still very much a beginner, and I'm still learning. Uh, and as I learn stuff, hopefully I'll be able to post it on uh, on YouTube and uh, and let you guys know what it is as well. But you may well find better ways to do this stuff. So um, just bear in mind that there you know there's there's a million ways to do this stuff. Uh, and what I'm going to show you is is the way I do it basically. Now I'm going to open uh, an adjustment layer for this uh, for this image. Uh, I'm going to click on the uh, black and white circle down here. Hopefully you can see my mouse. Uh, click on that and levels. Choosing le a levels adjustment layer, uh, and this opens the uh, levels panel. Uh, now hopefully you know what an adjustment layer is. If you don't, uh, you're not going through these tutorials in order, um, or you've just not seen it. Uh, so if you don't know what an adjustment layer is, it might be an idea to close this tutorial down and um, have a look at the uh, adjustment layer tutorial. Now, assuming you do know what an adjustment layer is, um, this is the uh, levels panel. Um, if you click on this thing here, where my mouse is, um, you can make it smaller and bigger. Um, if it's if it's larger, you've got slightly more control over uh, over these sliders. It goes up in ones instead of twos, I think. Um, I'm gonna, I'm actually going to zoom into this now, so you've got a much clearer picture of it, because that's probably looking a little bit uh, a little bit smaller on your screen. There you go. Uh, now I've um, included uh, part of the image uh, in this view so that you can see the effect that uh, any adjustments I make has on the image. You can't see the whole image but you can see a bit of it. Um, okay, this bit here, this is the uh, histogram. Um, I think I'll explain briefly what the histogram is uh, in a previous tutorial but I'll go through it again very quickly. Um, this uh, black slider here is the black point in the image if you like. Uh, the white slider adjusts the white point in the image uh, and think of this as a graph. Um, this is uh, black point is 0, white point is 255 uh, and uh, it's got various different tonal values in between uh, and this, uh, this little area here is uh, the count of pixels um, that relate to that particular tonal value uh, probably 80, 90 or something like that, the, the tonal value, that's what the tonal value will be in that region. Um, and the reason they're all piled up there, if you look at the image, is the image is predominantly grey at the moment. It won't be when we finish, but it is for the time being. Um, and you can see you can see this line here uh, that my mouse is going along. Um, you can see there's information there, there's data in there, a uh, very, very small pixel count, and it sort of gradually tails off. Um, they're the bits in the galaxy uh, and the stars and what have you that's sort of approaching the white point. Uh, there's nothing to the left of it because um, uh, you know this, this is the darkest value at the moment that's, that's in the image and we're, we're going to change that. Okay, now what we're trying to uh, achieve here is, is to stretch uh, this histogram, uh, stretch it across more of the uh, tonal ranges available to us between 0 and 255 um, and that improves the contrast and it brings out more detail in the image. Um, now it's not going to look like your holiday snaps. Um, you know, if you if you look at a histogram of uh, of your average uh, terrestrial photograph, if you like, then uh, the histogram will fill up this range. Um, it's not going to look anything like that because when you think about it, what you're going to end up with here is an image of uh, space, 
and space is predominantly black or close to black um, so most of the pixels are still going to be piled up in one place uh, but it will be slightly wider uh, and this um, it will tail off less steeply uh, by the time we finished um, now the first thing we need to do is get rid of this enormous gap here uh, between the, uh, uh, the the sort of darkest value of the pixels at the moment and the black point uh, and we can't move the histogram to the black point so we have to move the black point up to the histogram and we do that by moving the slider so I'm just moving that up slightly well, as I'm doing this if you look at a little bit of the image that you can see uh, you'll see the, um, the effect on the image it just makes it darker so we're going to move that up now move it up so that there's a gap, a little gap between the end of the histogram and the black slider. Don't go into the histogram. If you do that, if you go into it, you're clipping the image, what they call clipping the image. Uh, and it immediately turns all those pixels that are to the left of that slider black, completely black. No no, no, no data in there, no detail in them at all, just black. Uh, and we shouldn't really have any pure black in the image. Uh, so leave, um, leave a little gap between the... Um, the end of the histogram and the uh, black slider uh, and that's the first adjustment that uh, that we need to make now um, the white slider don't move the white slider um, that's the generally uh, perceived wisdom um, if you remember I mentioned this this line here this is uh, these little dots you can see this very thin sort of broken line um, they're pixels in the image that, uh, that are currently set at that tonal value if you start moving the white slider uh, you're moving them past the first few dots I hope you can see that so you immediately clip in your image in the other direction this time you're clipping the white um, so probably those uh, those few dots are stars uh, and at the moment they may contain some information like color uh, there may be some color in your stars uh, if you start moving the white point and you go past those little dots um, them stars are now going to be pure white so you've lost information there so don't move the white point um, leave that where it is a 255 uh, the grey slider, which is sort of the mid-range of the image as far as tonal value is concerned, that's the next thing to move. And move that back to about, I don't know, 120, 130, whatever your image will uh, will allow. And I'll explain that a little bit more later on. Um, so I've moved the grey point back to about 120, uh, and I'm going to leave that adjustment alone now. And I'm, I'm, now that I've, uh, you know, you've seen how this panel works, I'm going to zoom out again so that you can see the uh, entire image. Uh, and then we'll make a few more adjustments and then I'll explain a little bit more about um, why you don't want to make too many adjustments in this tool. Okay, Okay, back out to a, a full view now and uh, if I uh, click on this adjustment layer um, and make it invisible there you can see that's what we had previously when we uh, opened this image uh, for this tutorial uh, that's the background layer uh, and that's what it looks like now so you can see that um, there's more inform you know, more, more, more detail coming out in the image and the galaxy is slowly starting to become visible. Um, okay, I've made very small adjustments, apart from this initial big adjustment uh, to take out that gap, but that's safe to do because you can see there's, there's no data there, there's no line, there's no pixels of that value, so you're not clipping the image and it's safe to do that huge great adjustment initially. Um, with the, uh, the, the grey slider, um, I've only made a very small adjustment there and the reason that's only small is uh, the, mo the more adjustments we make here the more noise will become visible in the image I'm going to make uh, a couple of more uh, I'm going to put in a couple of more layers adjustment layers uh, and do a couple of more um, uh, adjustments in uh, in levels uh, and then I'll zoom into the image and show you what I mean by noise so I'm going to put in another adjustment layer now but we're happy with that one that's fine we've made that slight adjustment to the, uh, to the midpoint and we've moved the uh, black slider up so I'm going to put in another one uh, click down here and levels and now we've got another adjustment layer uh, the first thing you'll notice is that the, uh, the histogram is looking rather fractured there if you click on this button here uh, that will correct the histogram um, and what we can now see is what the histogram now looks like after the uh, adjustment was made uh, in the layer below um, hopefully you can see now that it's already wider uh, and the uh, the curve, you know, the the, the drop off there is less steep than it was before. I'll just uh, make that go go back to the layer below. Click on the uh, adjustment layer symbol, and that's what it was previously. And we go back to that one. Click on the button again, and you can see the change in the histogram. Okay. Now I'm going to make, uh, in this second layer, I'm going to make another slight adjustment to the black point. I'm going to move it up just a fraction um, near the histogram. 
Uh, and I'm going to make another slight movement down up to sort of 120 in the uh, uh, in the grey. I call it a grey point, the mid range really. Um, and that's that adjustment done. And now I'm going to put in another levels adjustment layer. Correct the histogram again. Okay, and you see hopefully that it's getting wider all the time. Uh, another slight movement in a black point, and another slight movement in a grey point. Now, if you look at the image, I'm going to make these invisible. Um, first layer, second layer, third layer. Okay. And you can see the difference with each layer as it progresses. The galaxy is slowly becoming more apparent, which is good. Um, now, I'm going to zoom into the image now, guys, and uh, explain to you why I personally don't do that many adjustments in, uh, uh, in levels. If I zoom in... Hopefully you can see this. Now, you can see all those different colours, all those uh, pixels. That's noise, the dreaded noise. The reason that's apparent now, and it wasn't before, is because of the stretching that I've done. Uh, my images, because of the kit I use, which is a bit cheap, um, well, I can afford, unfortunately, um, the noise, le the signal to noise ratio isn't great. Uh, signal to noise ratio basically means that. Uh, um, the signal, which is the, uh, I'm zooming back out again now, uh, the signal, which is the stuff you want to keep, um, galaxies and what have you, um, compared to the noise, uh, isn't very high. So if it's a low signal to noise ratio, ratio uh, then your signal level um, before the noise starts to, to creep in isn't very good. A high signal to noise ratio, ratio means that the noise won't become apparent quite as quickly as it does in this image. Um, the quality of your images you can depend very much on the quality of the kit that you're using. You may well be able to make multiple adjustments in levels. Um, I can generally only make one, two at the most, uh, before the noise becomes uh, too too obvious. Um, so I'm actually going to delete these first, uh, these last two um, levels adjustment layers, uh, only because this image isn't uh, of sufficient quality to be able to to do that many adjustments. Um, but play it by ear with yours, once you've got your image up, make several adjustments in levels, but always keep an eye on the background and see whether the noise is becoming apparent. Once the noise starts to really kick in, uh, then stop or go back one step um, and try and keep your image as clean as you possibly can. Uh, so I'm going to delete these two levels. That's that one gone. And that's that one gone. So I've just got the one adjustment in levels, basically. Um, and I'm quite happy with that. And uh, I'm now going to uh, uh, do some adjustments in curves. Uh, and that's going to be the subject of the next tutorial. Um, so I hope this was uh, useful. Um, there are a few other bits in this panel. You've got these uh, little eyedroppers here that, that will set the black point in the uh, histogram from the image. Uh, the bottom one will set the white point. I tend not to use those. I don't really necessarily find them that useful. Uh, and I think really that um, they're only really of any use if the quality of your data is extremely good. Uh, then you can actually set the black point for an image. You can pick the darkest point in your image and set the black point to that, and then pick the lightest point in your image and set the white point to that before you start doing more stretching. Um, but uh, as I say, I tend not to use these, and as these tutorials are about uh, the way I do it, um, I can't really go into any great detail about these things. Uh, and again, this slider here will, will set the uh, the black point and the white point depending on the tonal value. Um, all right, guys, I hope you found that useful. Um, the next one will be on... Uh, curves which is uh, um, a tool that, uh, that is extremely uh, useful uh, and we, we can adjust the tonal values of individual little bits of the image rather than the, the image as a whole. Levels adjust the whole image, uh, curves we can we can adjust bits of the image. Uh, so that will be the subject of the uh, next tutorial and uh, hopefully I'll uh, see you soon.